All right, welcome back, everybody. Aesop Grimm here. This is the continuation of our Learning Stellaris series, where I'm the one doing the learning. And uh, I have an example of that, actually. Um, I'm going to show you my robots here. As you guys recall, I set up my robots to do better on minerals and food. And I called them harvesters. But the problem that I'm starting to notice, and as far as I can tell, there's not a fix for it, is that you can wind up when they become droids, these robots will move and start taking jobs like enforcers. Even if it's more beneficial for us to have a human up there and have this robot working a farming or mining job. And I don't have a good way, or at least I couldn't find anything, that shows me how I can have these robots fill these jobs first until they're maxed out with all robots, and then, and only then, start to fill specialist jobs. I'm just not quite sure how to accomplish that. So I think what I'm gonna do, and I've never done this before, so I don't know, I've always gone with this template and I don't know how this is gonna go. But because I know I have robots working specialist jobs, I want to remove these specializations. I'll keep the luxurious malice because it's a one-time upfront cost and it gives us two more points back so pop assembly cost is increased 20 percent, but you pay that once and you're done and down here i'm going to take efficient processors now that's going to cost us three trait points but it gives you plus five percent resources from any job that they're working at all i want to throw that on there and then i'm going to throw on durable to reduce our upkeep by 10 percent and i'm going to add uh mass produced pop assembly speed is increased 15 percent and uh i think i'll go ahead and grab a different looking robot because they're not just going to be in the fields anymore let's say this one And I don't really know what I would call them. Um, I don't want to call them harvesters at all. Yeah, it's not gonna. Uh, what would we autom automatons maybe? <laughs> what am I doing here? Atama uh, tonic, maybe for an adjective. Okay, create the template and then apply that to all. It'll take seventy six months, uh, thirty two months. And we can't start that until the flesh is weak is done. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next thing I need to do then is I need to go and have automatons being produced. Yeah, I wish there was a way to really specialize. That would be cool. But it seems like that's tricky for the programming. 
because you have a lot of customization they would have to program it where i mean it's probably a slew of options that you got to get in and do all right now the next thing that i want to tell you about is uh we'll use this triangle right here not not this part but just this part here as a visual representation to show the cycle that we're in because we're going to use the pause function again in this game and um what it is is that we're in a cycle where we create jobs and then we grow populations and then we fill jobs and then we create jobs and then we grow populations and then we fill jobs rinse and repeat that's the cycle that we're in so I want to illustrate that to you in the first 10 minutes of gameplay and then put you on pause and bring you back for the last 10 minutes of gameplay. I, I really kind of have the sense that what that's going to create for you is a sense that you see what's happening. You, you feel like part of the flow of the game, but you don't feel like you're being abruptly cut out from what's going on and that you're missing out on stuff. I don't know if it'll work that way, but that's just a gut instinct that I have. I think maybe it works that way for me, so I'm wondering maybe it works that way for a lot of people. Um, so we're creating jobs here. Now this is the only, if we go through here, Unity has no, oh, I'm wrong about that, it's got two jobs open. Uh, but we're done upgrading science. What two jobs are open here? Technicians. Can we remedy that? Yes. Okay, Unity now has no jobs open. Karenval, no jobs open. Uh, having Cure, no jobs open. Vium Prime, no jobs open. Vium Secundus, no jobs open. Jafon 1. All of the... Uh, Basic research labs have been upgraded to research complexes. Remember, this is how we made our huge jump in research capability. So we're, we're, we're good with these for right now. Zero jobs open. Zero jobs open. And again, all the labs have been upgraded and, and filled. The jobs filled. Zeldra, zero jobs open. If all Prime has one job open, but we got a lot that we're building. We're going to stack this planet with uh, gas refineries. Because we're at Neg 18 right now. Haramuth, no jobs open. Uldra, no job. Uldor, no jobs open. And Manakadir Prime, no jobs open. So. We've effectively managed unemployment down to where we're really just zeroing in on one world right now. So let's unpause it. We're almost done with these opening 10 minutes because I, w I had to give some explanation. So let's just sort of watch as this cycle works. There's currently three jobs open, not a lot of unemployment. You can see some of the tech that we've researched to speed up building. Science it's paying Division off here. Reports a new breakthrough. Okay, we have a disruptor now. We will take... Uh, let's get the advanced reactor booster. Special project complete. And there it is. We are now transhumans. The cybernetic conversion process has been completed. All of our citizens have now been equipped with neural implants and basic cybernetic suites. The infrastructure is also in place, excuse me, uh, to gradually modify any new citizens that are born within our nation so that they can experience all the benefits of technology from an early age. And we will now be known as transhumans and we've received the cyborg trait. Complete. successful 100% and uh, now we can apply this and it's already begun it finishes in 30 months okay good uh, what just happened is that uh, we got our defense grid supercomputer in so we will add 
defense platforms. Construction complete. Okay. Are we out over here? No, but we're getting close to it. We'll buy those. Um, seven jobs open. And I'm going to need six housing districts. And we're going to... This is a 24-tile world, so we're going to double up and put ag districts down as well. And then the remaining two districts can go into housing. So we're going to have a lot of jobs open on the fall prime. And you can see it's just job after job. We're at, we're at 13 jobs now. Now we're going to go through a stretch where we're just building housing and there's not going to be any jobs. Then we're going to add in more jobs. So uh, that's where we're at right now. Now I'm going to pause our countdown timer. And I'm going to put you guys on pause. But you kind of understand what I'm doing in this episode. And I'll bring you back whenever anything significant happens. Alt-tabbing. Uh, make a note of the year, guys, and I'm putting you on pause as of right now. Okay, welcome back, guys. Uh, it's 2346. The project finished. I deleted the other modifications, so we just have automatons now. And uh, so we should, in we should see an increase in our production speed especially combined with the flesh is weak and I can show you that right here um, the assembly speed is at 2.53 uh, per month and that comes from a plus 2 from pop jobs plus 15% from mass produced and plus 10% from the flesh is weak so 20 plus 27% uh, that's a pretty substantial increase but you can see how it affected um, our resources. We, I'm not really sure. You guys might know better than me because you can go back in the video. It would not have affected energy credits. And I, this number looks pretty close to what I was making before with agriculture. It might have affected minerals a little bit. But we, uh, we should, we have a plus five percent to all jobs that. Uh, that the robots are doing now rather than 15% to food and minerals so uh, let's see where are we at we're at e full prime here and uh, we're now constructing our agricultural districts oh no we're not I'm sorry we're still constructing city districts and so we're opening these up we have 13 open jobs so again, it's 2346. What else has happened? Is there anything else I needed to tell you guys about? I, uh, we got the defense grid supercomputer, and so we're building these. I think you guys saw that, though. I think that's it, fellas. That's all the stuff that I have to show you. I don't have any other projects here to research. So I will put you back on pause. I'm just pausing the countdown timer now, alt tabbing, and I'll bring you guys back on the next significant event. Uh, see you in a little bit. Okay, welcome back guys. I wanted to show you that uh, we got the technology to terraform tomb worlds and things are progressing here. We've got one job open. 
people are transferring there on their own. Now, I think I have to manually transfer robots, uh, but the humans will transfer on their own. Uh, let's see here. The other thing... Oh yeah, notice that we're, we're starting to suffer an economic downturn in the energy credits. The rest of our economy will keep us afloat. Uh, but that's that's something we're want, we're going to want to address as soon as we're done with a fall prime. And we have a little ways to go with a fall still. We can upgrade here, and this is appropriate because this I want to talk about. We're about to... We're getting close to researching uh, battleships. And I'm going to want to add battleships to our existing fleets. I, I We're not researching that tech yet. I'm just uh, saying that here pretty soon that tech has been available for a little while and I'm going to go ahead and select it as a research option. So we'll be able to use battleships. But we need to improve our naval capacity. Um, the way we're going to do that is with anchorages. So we're going to put anchorages where there's worlds at. Because there's a few things that you can put into a star base that has a world in it that you can't do elsewhere. So we're going to upgrade Karenval Station. 9, uh, 10, 11. We have three. So uh, we'll do Haven here. We'll just go down the line, I guess. Haven here. These are population centers. They, they, they're population farms. Let's do uh, Uldor. Okay, there's our three. So j I'm just letting you know that we're going to be building anchorages and building those out. That's going to increase our naval capacity. Uh, fairly, it, it's not insignificant. And so we'll be able to fit battleships into our fleets until we can start building up Manakadir Prime as a dedicated naval world. And uh, we're continuing to work on a fall prime. So I'm going to pause our countdown timer. And I'm going to place you guys on pause as well. I'm alt tabbing. And pausing you right now. All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, we just learned battleships. So I got a few things to show you. Let's take a look at a fall prime. Things are going well here. We're currently at zero jobs. Planetary administration is going to develop. It, it just began. Uh, we've filled out all of our districts now by this point in time. Uh, we are suffering pretty badly. It, it's the amenities that are causing it. It's bringing instability here. Um, so that's causing this problem here. Low stability. We're flagged. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to throw up hollow theaters. And we're going to throw up precinct houses. And we're going to throw up a food processing clinic. And then the rest is going to be filled out with um, exotic gas refineries once this completes. Okay. So that's where we're at for when it comes to planet development. Uh, planetary development. I just upgraded this fleet. We, we got a tech. I don't remember what it was, but they needed to be upgraded. So I've ordered that. They're in the process of uh, beginning that right now. Deneb Station, we were able to add a deep space black site. That's going to add 15% to ruler skill, 10% to one vision, and uh, plus 25% governing ethics attraction and an additional five stability. I don't know if that five stability is empire. No, it's a system modifier. Okay, that's, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, my anchorages are, are coming up right now, and I have put transit hubs in. And so uh, our naval capacity is increasing as we speak. We just learned battleships. So let me take you into the ship designer. And uh, I'm going to actually take you in reverse order. The battle axe, everything about this has remained the same. We're just out of reach of being able to put in an afterburner here. I would like to do that, but right now I think that puts us at neg 13. Everything else, I was able to do that, or it was already there. Um, 
this one already had an afterburner. I think the cruiser did also. It had one afterburner. I was able to put two. I also noticed that my cruiser had a large gun. I think uh, an artillery core. And so I switched that to a broadside so that the cruiser is medium. Do I have a broadside available over here? Yeah, I do. Let's put that up. And we'll put another advanced railgun out here. Okay, so we, we're, we're three and three. Can I keep afterburners? Yes. A ship of this design is currently being built. Go to Deneb Station. I just began this stuff, so let's discontinue it. Oh, and we're in the final 10 minutes of the episode, so we'll just let it roll from here. Okay, we've discontinued. Go back to uh, Ship Designer. And it was the Tristan. And I want to switch that over to a broadside stern and add an advanced rail gun. And then throw in... Ooh, the, suddenly the power doesn't look as good. Oh, we're okay. Okay. Hit save. Okay, so that's that's the cruiser class. And then we have our new battleship, which I have armed up with torpedoes in the front and in the back here. These torpedoes don't do much shield damage. And I have this ship set up with the assumption that most shields have been stripped. So it's going to do big armor damage, but really big hull damage, plus 75%. That's nice. And then I put a hangar core in here with some medium ranged weapons. Um, I evenly disperse them between stripping shields and stripping armor. So uh, two two guns for stripping shields in case, you know, something breaks through and comes close. I've also, I used to get thrown off by this. I've also, uh, you, you can see here I have the hangar core. And I have set this up to be a carrier. Now let's read this tooltip. Uh, the carrier, the under carrier tactics, the ship will stay at extreme range, 150, whatever the unit of measurement is, meters, kilometers, decameters, you know, uh, light years, <laughs> whatever, whatever the measurement is. It stays at 150 range and it fires its long range weapons on the target. Well, that puts us out of range of a very, the, this is the torpedoes and missiles have the longest range in the game and that's only 130 so why would i want my battleships hanging out at 150 is the idea that the enemy closes within range eventually and then you start opening up with the big guns that used to really throw me for a loop and i'm like i don't want to do that but as you probably already noticed right above that it says the ship engagement range is increased by 50 percent and so that's what brings us within range. Now that means my medium guns here have a 75 whatever range, right? Well, what's half of 75? Uh, 35, 30, like 37 maybe, 77 is 14, 367, yeah. It's another 37, right? Let's just make it 35 to make it easy. Five and five is 10, carry the one, seven and one is eight, plus the three, 9, 10, 11. I forgot what the first one was, <laughs> but it puts us in the 110, 115 range. Now that's still, that's gonna be outside of 150, but it doesn't take long for those ships. Let's say this is 100, 170 range or 150 range where, where the rest of our ships are combating the enemy and the enemy, this, kind of cyclones towards the battleships these will start kicking in at 110 range that's going to be like right around here so it's not bad and then you have um you have the basic strike craft here 
So that's what we're dealing with there on the naval end. Now what we're waiting for is we're waiting for capacity. And we're not there yet. We need to be up over 400 if I want to add five battleships to every fleet. But we're building our way towards it. So we'll unpause. And uh, we'll go ahead and order the upgrade. Uh-oh, what's this about? Oh, somebody wants to open up an embassy here. I'm okay with that. Tebron Nation. Okay. That's these rebels right here. You have more rebels. <laughs> They're having some problems. Science division reports a new breakthrough. Okay, we got Positronic AI. Next, I'm going to grab, oh, Tachyon. No, I thought that was Tachyon lasers. Let's get the gamma lasers for now. Oh, wait, 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 zero point reactor. Almost limitless supply of ship power. Yeah, I want that. Okay. Ships refitted. That'll let me uh, hopefully put uh, afterburner into the Corvettes. Construction complete. Okay. Now we're up to 332 on our naval cap, and we are expanding. We're going to expand that. Anchorage, and we can add... Naval Logistics Office now, that's going to add plus two naval capacity to each one of these anchorages. And uh, and the anchorage adds four, so we're getting six naval capacity per anchorage. And then we'll upgrade, and we'll do that to all three. Two anchorages, Naval Logistics Office, upgrade. Uldor. Two anchorages, uh, Naval Logistics Office, upgrade. Holistic Asset Coordination, have I ever even seen this before? To promote and facilitate an optimized logistic output, we should work together to stimulate a streamlined galactic infrastructure for market and knowledge sharing. Bureaucratic upkeep will increase, naval capacity will drop, but trade protection will increase, trade value will go up, and uh, diplomatic weight from the economy will go up. Uh, okay, I think... I think I would be alright with that. How would we roleplay this? We're a militaristic society, maybe we would oppose it. I want to try opposing it, but I'm not going to demand anything. I won't. 750. Wow, that's quite expensive. <laughs> we could uh, veto it, but I'm not going to do that. All right. Ships refitted. Time to move more robots over to a full prime. Oh, we can upgrade this also. Resettle. Oh, a full prime already has one unemployed. Oh, it's because it's a specialist. It doesn't cost us anything to move an automaton. It does cost us to move a transhuman. Oh, four on, on. Okay, that's a fall. All right. And now we can upgrade to a planetary capital. We probably Science need to buy exotic gases again, and then we can sell food. Uh, what do we have here? Tebron has declared Hesplav Nation. Oh, the rebels have rivaled each other. <laughs> That's probably not going to work well for you guys. You should have joined forces. Plasma thrusters have been researched. 
Oh, synthetics. Yeah, we're going to take that option right now. Robot output plus 10%. That's pretty good. Science division report success. We're getting deeper into a hole on credits. It's nothing we can't sustain, but I do, I am looking forward to being able to build up one of these worlds that we can put generator districts on. Select lineages is done. Yeah, maybe the clone army would be nice. Synthetic thought patterns would also be nice. I'm gonna grab that instead. Okay, well, our timer just went off. Well, how are we looking? Do we? Yeah, this is a generator world. This this would be helpful to build up. Um, okay, we're we're back in the green here, and see, we immediately jumped up to sixty one percent stability. So uh, that's quite good. All right, well, that's going to be the end of this episode. We'll pick up where we left off in the next episode. Continuing to build up. Here, let's just line it up right now. We're going to do a bunch of exotic gas refineries. Yes, yes, y'all. All right, um, save it. We're in the year, what, 2354. I think I've got a good system here about rolling tape the first 10 minutes, pausing you for rinse and repeat actions, and then bringing you back and rolling tape in the last 10 minutes. It feels good to me. Um, now, you guys are going to see this well after I've recorded all this stuff because, because I have a GIMP card. I, I don't want to put this up on YouTube and let it go live until I can ensure that I have the whole series done. But um, if 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 it uh, if you can find it in your heart, <laughs> let me know in the comments section whether or not this format here, where I do ten minutes of roll tape and then we pause and then I do ten minutes of roll tape at the end, works for you. Does it does it help you feel like the episode's going smoothly and you're not abruptly being chopped out of things and um, and, and you feel like you're missing stuff while also compressing the time and reducing the number of episodes uh, for the playthrough. I would like that feedback. I'm very hesitant. I, I give a lot of explanation on those comments because one of the things that annoys me is YouTubers always sort of... there. You know, YouTube has a, a methodology like anything else and likes and shares and subscribes and leave a comment and people ask a question and they tell you, oh man, I'm really interested in what you have to say. Leave a comment down below and tell me what you think about this. And it, it's just like, I, bro, do you really even care what they think? Or are you just trying to work the algorithm? And it, I'm very leery of disingenuity. Is that a word? Disingenuousness. And I don't want you guys to think that about me. So uh, this is a this is just a real request. How does this work for everybody else? It seems to make sense to me. But uh, if nothing else, not not even for the good of the channel, just to understand how people's minds work, I, I'm curious. So uh, if you can let me know, that'd be great. And uh, other than that, I think we'll we're done with this episode. So again, I'm Aesop Grimm. Thank you for coming by the channel. I do hope you like what you saw. I hope all is well in your neck of the woods in this crazy place that we call Earth right now. Man, it is it is nuts out there. There, there are things going on that I don't even want to get into it, man. I think we all feel the same. No matter what side of different polarizing issues that you fall on, everybody's looking at this world going, what in the heck? <laughs> You know, so hopefully all is well wherever you're at. I mean, this is a planet-wide thing, right? And uh, I will see you in the next episode where this story continues.